Second paragraph reads, it was the Bible that gave the decisive force and authority to the Protestant Reformation in its revolt against Rome and the errors it had been teaching for centuries. Over a against an allegorical interpretation of Scripture where many different meanings were read into the Bible, biblical text, the Protestant Reformation emphasized the importance of a grammatical, historical interpretation of the Bible which took seriously the grammar and literary meaning of the Bible text. So I want to go over the different, different uh, rules of exegesis or determining what a text means. The, the method advocated here is the historical grammatical method, and that is when one strives to understand the author's original intended meaning in the text, what the words meant that the author wrote and the author was trying to convey the meaning. That's what we want to understand. That's the, uh, the view of many conservative Protestant groups. The historical critical method, which is different than the historical grammatical method, the historical critical method, or also known as higher criticism, is the method that investiga investigates the origins of the ancient texts in, in order to understand the world or the culture in which they ar had arisen in, looking for the cultural applications and understanding of the day rather than what the author was intending when he wrote it. So a simple example for us today would be if some author wrote um, the following. He's a gay fellow. The historical grammatical method would seek to understand what the author meant by those words. Did the author mean that this was a happy person or did the author mean that this was a homosexual person? The historical critical method though would not seek to under, under determine what the author meant, would, would simply say, well, in the culture of our day, gay means um, homosexual, so that's what we understand it to mean. They take the cultural, um, the primary cultural um, use of the word as the way they understand the meaning. And then the third way is revealed exegesis. And this posits that the Holy Spirit inspired the authors of the Bible to write things beyond the Bible writer's own understanding. And the Bible contains deeper truths and deeper meanings than the authors themselves intended when they wrote it. Each of these methods have their strengths and their weaknesses. The lesson prefers the historical grammatical method, which is common to a lot of Protestant groups. But I can assure you with 100% certainty that the authors don't use it exclusively. They use other methods at the same time. Here's two quotes from one of the founders of the uh, Seventh-day Adventist Church. I want you to consider whether you agree with this approach and, and, and whether you apply this approach to how you read Scripture and whether you think the lesson authors do. Um, the first is Christ in his Heavenly Sanctuary, page 103. No truth is more clearly taught in the Bible than that God is, by his Holy Spirit, especially directs his servants on earth, in the great movements for carrying forward the work of salvation. Men are instruments in the hand of God, employed by him to accomplish his purposes of grace and mercy. Each has his part to act, and each is granted a measure of light adapted to the necessities of his time, and sufficient to enable him to perform the work which God has given him to do. And that's really, uh, I'm just going to pause there, there's an important idea in that, in that uh, statement, and that is, if God ever calls you to an action, God always enables you with the gifts necessary to complete the action. He'll never call you to do something he doesn't provide the resources and abilities for you to do. Continue on with the quote. But no man, however honored of heaven, has ever attained to a full understanding of the great plan of salvation, or even to a perfect appreciation of the divine purpose in the work for his own time. Men do not fully understand what God would accomplish by the work which he gives them to do. They do not comprehend in all its bearings the message which they utter in his name. Even the prophets who were favored with the special illumination of the Spirit did not fully comprehend the import of the revelations committed to them. The meaning was to be unfolded from age to age as the people of God should near, need the instruction therein contained. Wow, that sounds a whole lot to me like the revealed exegesis method. And then from the book Desire of Ages, 494, 
Often as Jesus presented the Old Testament scriptures and showed their application to himself and his work of atonement, the disciples had been awakened by his spirit and lifted into a heavenly atmosphere. Of the spiritual truth spoken by the prophets, the disciples had a clearer understanding than had the original authors themselves. So do we believe that all of these methods, do we agree with these ideas? Do you use the ideas just described in these quotations? Does history and evidence support them to be true? That over the course of time, more and more truth has been derived from Scripture than the people at the time even understood. Consider the book of Daniel, who was given a specific instruction that the book should be sealed to the end of time. He didn't understand. He asked for it, didn't get insights into everything. Consider any field of study. Science, medicine, mathematics, automotive technology. Isn't it true that as truths are understood by one generation and taught to the next generation, that with each generation, more truths are added to the truths currently understood? In other words, truth unfolds. Isn't it true in any field of study? Wouldn't that be true for biblical knowledge as well? If we use strictly the historical grammatical method, then we cannot gain more from Scripture than the original authors understood and intended when they wrote it. It would severely limit our understanding, our capacity for growth, the agency of the Holy Spirit who inspired both the prophets and enlightens those of us who study Scripture. So I think, my view, all methods have their value and, when used correctly, can be used together, integrated. But the biggest problem I have with any of these methods is it doesn't address the assumptions a person has when they come to the scripture. And the critical assumption that clouds the interpretation of scripture is when people come believing that God's law functions like human law, a system of rules without consequence other than the ruling authority polices breaches in the rule and the ruling authority punishes rule breakers. When you come to the Bible with that presupposition, then it doesn't matter what method you use, you artificially bring in a distortion of God's character, a distortion of God's government, a distortion of God's method, and ultimately make God out to look like Satan in character. And that's the biggest corruption. Sunday's lesson.